One of the joys and curses of having a medical degree is that there's so much that you can do with it. When I say that, the first thing that probably comes to your mind is all the different specialties that one can pursue within medicine. And you're right, there are a hell of a lot of specialties from generalist specialties like general practice or gen med or emergency medicine to hyper-specialized specialties like ophthalmology, radiation oncology, or pediatric nuclear medicine. But that's not what I'm gonna be talking about today. No, today we'll be talking about some of the non-clinical pathways that exist once you have a medical degree. Now, this isn't just something that I've researched for the sake of creating this video. No, as I've progressed throughout medical school, I've realized that whilst I do like working with patients and have enjoyed the time that I've spent doing clinical placements, the idea of doing something or the same thing for the rest of my life doesn't really excite me. I'm the sort of person who likes variety and learning across different fields. So whilst I would definitely continue my career in clinical medicine, I'm also exploring other non-clinical avenues as well. Now, before I go into these career pathways, I'd highly recommend you check out the Creative Careers in Medicine or CCIM Facebook group. If you're an Australian med student or doctor, Irrespective of whether you're looking for information about alternative careers in medicine, the Facebook group really provides a supportive community of health professionals, mainly doctors. And if you have any questions about anything really, you can post them in the group and you can choose to be anonymous if you want to, and you'll get really great answers and advice from other doctors who have already trodden the path that you want to. Before we get into it, if you do find this video to be useful and you'd like me to do a part two, please let me know in the comment section down below. Oh, and one final piece of hedging before I get into it. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm an expert in any of these areas. I've just done a little bit of research and this is what I've found. Okay, so the first alternative career is working in management consulting. So what is management consulting? Basically, it's where you're hired by a company to help solve problems that company is facing. So usually you work for a consulting firm because solving these problems can require enormous amounts of time and manpower. And large firms typically have the resources to ensure that you don't have to spend your time doing a lot of administrative work and you can focus on the problem solving aspects. In the management consulting space, the big three firms are Bain and Company, McKinsey and Company, and Boston Consulting Group, or BCG. So to make this more concrete, let's use an example. Let's say an athletic apparel company called Ekin has made a pledge to become carbon neutral by 2030, but currently in 2022, they're not on track to meet this goal. Ekin hires a management consulting firm, CVB, to find out why they're not on track and what steps they can implement to reach this goal. CVB sends out you and a team of four other management consultants to help solve this problem. You have four weeks to work on this project and get the client a solution. So hopefully this example demonstrates that as a management consultant, you get to work in a team to solve complex high level problems for companies. And these problems have a much larger scale impact than the ones that you solve on a day-to-day -day basis working as a doctor. Now, doctors are well suited to these positions since we're taught systematic approaches to problem solving during med school, and we've got quite good communication skills. So these are two really crucial skills in this particular field. Irrespective of what level of doctor you are, if you become a management consultant, you'll generally be starting at the bottom of the hierarchy. That is working as a business analyst or a junior associate. So therefore, the remuneration initially, according to Glassdoor, is around 95k. Per year. If you're interested in this career pathway, I'll leave a couple of videos linked in the description below. So what is a medical science liaison or an MSL? An MSL is essentially someone who's employed by a pharmaceutical, biotechnology or medical device company whose primary role is healthcare consulting and liaison. So as an MSL, you are the conduit between the company that you work for and the healthcare worker or opinion leader. An MSL's roles may include developing and maintaining relationships with these opinion leaders. And these opinion leaders tend to be doctors, researchers, or allied health professionals, providing up-to-date information about the company's product and the latest research in the field to these opinion leaders, collaborating with these opinion leaders to facilitate their involvement in initiatives such as 
publications or advisory boards or medical education opportunities, training internal stakeholders on the key scientific and medical topics in the area of interest through the delivery of medical presentations. Now, in terms of remuneration, I couldn't find specifics, but Payscale mentions that the average base salary for an MSL is around 101k per annum. If there's one area of healthcare that has boomed over the past few years, it's digital health. So what is digital health? Digital health is essentially the use of technology to enhance healthcare delivery. It encompasses quite a broad scope of practice, including the use of wearable devices, mobile health, telehealth and health information technology to improve health outcomes. So you might be thinking, what does a career in digital health actually look like? Well, some of the roles that you may perform include designing health-focused educational resources for use by other healthcare staff, assisting in the development of virtual care platforms, providing advice and telehealth support to other staff members, as well as working in a more managerial role liaising with stakeholders, overseeing staff, or doing PR work. As you can see, the roles are quite diverse, but generally the positions that a doctor may occupy involve higher level managerial work. In terms of remuneration, one sample job that I looked at was for a project manager position for eHealth Queensland, and this offered an annual salary of $140,000, but I'm sure that the pay is quite variable depending on your employer. Medical education can range from the delivery of informational content targeted to the medical student level, all the way up to even the consultant level. There are loads of different ways that you can get involved in medical education. For example, if you're more entrepreneurial minded, then you can start your own YouTube channel, your own blog, your own podcast, or your own company focused at delivering high quality med ed content. If you're a GP, then you can work for the regional training organizations as a medical educator, or you can work for universities as a clinical skills tutor, as a PBL tutor, or as a course coordinator. There are quite a diverse range of roles that you can apply for if you are interested in medical education. And if you've identified a particular area where you think medical education is lacking, for example, dermatology for medical students, then there's nothing stopping you from going out and addressing that niche by creating your own learning resources or platform. The remuneration for working in medical education varies greatly, depending on whether you're working for an organization versus working on your own project, like a YouTube channel. I'll leave a resource linked in the description which has some useful general tips about jobs in medical education. Now, if you're interested in more of a leadership role, then this next career option might be for you. Medical administration is a specialty recognized by the Medical Board of Australia with its own College, the Royal Australasian College of Medical Administrators, or RACMA. To become a fellow of RACMA, or a FRACMA, then you need to complete the four-year training program and pass the exit exams. Alternatively, if you have already completed a fellowship in another specialty, then you can become an associate fellow of the college by doing the Leadership for Clinicians program, but I think this is more tailored to those who still want to work clinically, but also be a leader in their space. Though the roles that you can be in are very diverse, Broadly speaking, your responsibilities may involve managing clinical workforces, overseeing multi-million dollar budgets, and managing capital investments such as buildings or biomedical technologies, dealing with medical legal and performance issues relating to clinical services and staff, liaising with key stakeholders, so for example, hospital boards or ministers. A career in medical administration can lead to a range of senior positions, including becoming a chief medical officer or CMO, or another chief health executive of an organization, so for example, Headspace, becoming a director of medical services for a hospital, becoming a consultant to governments or private sector health services. In terms of remuneration, this 2011 MJA article states that one might expect a starting salary of around 300K per annum as a fellowed public sector medical administrator. So that's it. Those are the five non-clinical careers in medicine. If you found this video useful, please let me know in the comment section 
description down below and also feel free to drop a like on this video. One of the things that I do on this channel is document my process of trying to craft my ideal lifestyle and the factors that I consider. So if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, feel free to subscribe. If you want to see more videos pertaining to medicine, I'll leave that playlist here. Or if you're interested in how I bullet journal, I'll leave a link to that video here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.